Okay, great to be here. Can you hear me? Yeah? Okay. Um, yeah, a couple of weeks ago I was in a conference where I might still want to use PowerPoint to make a presentation. Oh, no. Oh, it was so excited that I said, ah, oh, no. And, yeah, oh, no. Yeah. But after the, the party yesterday, you know, and I'm going to go live, it's so hard to write equations on this thing that I decided not to do so many. Um, so he would go like this, look at this, and so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, this is Blake Lawson's best trip. Um, I decided to make a brief overview of some of our joint work. And, I, and so this collaborators are all sanctified. There has been a Mary, Paul, and Peter somewhere here. So the three of us um, collaborated with Blaine on, on this. And uh, these are the sources of what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So this content, I have some content here. Um, let me translate that for you. Basically, uh, for the first half of the talk, I'll be bombarding you with splitting of spaces in Blattenberg, my playing spaces, and you'll be by then, hopefully, trying to find a better thing to think about. And for the following half an hour, I'll explain, or at least I'll try to explain what was it all about anyway. So, um, so for you who want to find something else to think about, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you some initial homework. So the uh, algebraic geometer should try to um, to see if everything I'm doing here could be done more typically, for example. The differential geometers should perhaps try to see if we could do everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm doing that now. Okay, so <laughs> the differential geometers should think uh, if they can do that in terms of federal operators and, and or perhaps um, high degree versions of this. And uh, so the algebraic topologies should try to find an application for this. <laughs> okay, so um, I think it works. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, here you go. So um, as you saw yesterday, uh, the algebraic cycles on a complex algebraic variety is um, it's a free being group generated by cycles of collimation Q, and I decided to use collimation, so it should make sense, everything. So that um, make my presentation easier. So, and, and there is a great source for events for algebraic varieties, you know, all, all kind of different uh, approach to intersection theory and creation of invariants. Classical algebraic geometry uh, into um, the motivic realm nowadays. You uh, have we used algebraic cycles, um, but now since we're talking about complex algebraic varieties and everybody else here yeah, with very big exception, the differential geometers. So maybe you should think about them as sort of integral currents in the platform topology, some scala compact manifold. And therefore, they become a very nice, um, very nice out of the topological group. So it's not pro. Okay. So um, if you think of them as, as currents, then with the platform topology is a nice house of topological group out of which you can uh, compute invariance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it better off? Is this now okay? I can try to talk louder, but I don't know if that helps. Okay, fine. So, uh, and so, one, one, one nice, uh, so it has a nice natural topology that can have also several different of the metric descriptions. And um, with that, for example, if the group acts by automorphism of a variety, then um, it acts in acts of the right cycles by continuous groups of auto automorphisms. So, Blaine, Mahalouis, and I, we started actions of finite groups on um, cycles on representation of representations, for example. And, and that has very interesting connections to equivalent homology and, um, and has relations to equivalent theory and characteristic classes for such things. 
but those are actions by alternatives on the vacuum um, spaces. Now, what about you have real varieties? So real varieties then, um, if you look at the complex points of new varieties, they have, it, it becomes equipped with this action of the Galois group, now um, by, say, anti-holomorphic maps and the complex points of the variety, but that action translates into our topology. So then as current, it's easy to see that this acts continuously on, on cycle of coordination Q in a variety. And so what you want to do is to um, understand, at least at first, explain why later, uh, understand um, the equivalent topology of cycles out of this action. Okay, so, um, and I will explain also what equivalent means soon. But uh, of course, the, the example, the only one I'm going to talk about anyway, are uh, Brasovian varieties over R. And what I would like to under this perspective, probably type will be sleeping, but it's just these two types over R that we have. And these are varieties that um, when you extend, make a big extension, they are isomorphic to comp complex projective spaces. So um, basically it comes in two types. So these varieties come in two flavors, those with real points and those without real points. But I'm going to try to characterize them in terms of their complex points. So um, first a little definition. So if you have it, this comes from representation theory, class of groups. Um, if you have a complex vector space with an anti-linear map, J, so complex anti-linear map, then we say that this is a real vector space of J squared J identity. And if there's a quaternionic vector space, the square is minus the identity. And uh, so <clears throat> given such, such a vector space and such a structure map, then we talk about the, the set of complex, complex lines to the origin in V. And this set, of course, carries the action of J, which coincides with the action of the Galois group. And, um, the complex points of the real variety. So, if you have a, 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 a orthogonal variety over R, then if you try to look at the complex points of the variety, it has only two, two different types. So, on the one hand, it can be just lines on complex, lines on the origin on the real vector space, or it could be a definition of real vector space, or it could be lines of the origin to um, a quaternionic vector space. So basically this is a trivial and a non-trivial um, cross a very variety. And so that's, a, that's a, what the situation is. So as uh, so the first element then basically what we're studying is, is uh, this um, anti-automorphic action on projective space. There are two types of them and we want to see what does the space of currents defined by um, algebraic varieties. So, um, ha. so this thing becomes liquid space. I forgot. So liquid space means they have an evolution. And <laughs> 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 so, uh, actually, not Z2. I'm going to So, now, the draw of that. Uh, this quaternionic and real vector spaces, of course, are the CN with the complex conjugation evolution and HN, where this is where the quaternion stands, or uh, itself in time, is a multiplication by J on the left. So I want to make notation for the break cycles on, on the balance of the um, balance of the variety of the complex points of it. Um, we denote by that just to. to Keep in mind that we are thinking about these two possibilities for, for complex vector spaces with a structure J. Okay, so now, as we, as we talked before, the, the, the space of um, the space of cycle of coordination Q on the projectization, so on P of B on this projective space, comes with a two-space under the action of the Galois group. 
So the Z2 space then, if you think about this uh, fixed point set under the action, and the fixed point set here in the, in the space of real time is of co-dimension here on projected space. And um, so that's the notation Z after Q or R or PT. So those are, the small R means that V is a real vector space in that sense, and that the cycles are fixed by the action. So those are the, the real cycles. And then you can make it similar. The definition is just change the R by the H, the real by the thermionic, and the point by the H form the thermionic. So you have uh, the group of quaternionic cycles of cultivation T. So the first, the first thing you're going to do is try to understand the homotopy type of these spaces, both the, <coughs> both the real and the quaternionic cycle. So if, so far we know there are um, half of topological groups. So if there are half, um, and there are B, I mean, there are B. So the next step is to try to understand the homotopy type of these uh, billion topological groups. Oh no, a billion topological groups like these two, the, the quaternionic side, this little piece should be upper cube, okay? I started to dimension and switch to co-dimension, but it was on stage. Okay, so this, this, this topological space, there are our products of Adam Bergman plane spaces. So that's a two by more. A billion topological group is always a product of Adam Bergman plane spaces. It's a monotonic product of Adam Bergman plane spaces. Um, and, and it suffices them, I don't explain, no, it's not really enough, to determine their homotopy groups. Remember that Alan Batman's like spaces are spaces that have only one non trivial uh, homotopy group pi, and that's the nth homotopy group of this, this notation. So if, if you know that spaces are part of Alan Batman's like spaces, and if you know their homotopy groups, then you know that the part of k pi and the homotopy pi, but if we're going to do more than that. We're going to find a canonical splitting of these spaces in some product. So, and now, and now, I'm going to put everybody's temperatures, and I believe the answer is yes. Um, but all, all of this can be done more typically. Uh, although, uh, I think the most interesting challenge at the end will be, I will put a side comment on this, so we think about it as well, um, is we're going to have some spectra at the end, and can we translate that into the motivic category? as well. So that would be an interesting thing to have. But so, so in particular, to talk about spectra, um, keep in mind that you want to stabilize the spaces in some appropriate way. So you want to ask, what happens when you put CN inside CN plus 1, CN plus 2? So the same way you use Brassmanians to stabilize, and at the end, Brassmanians give you two, I mean, give you the classified space of, of the unitary group. Then if you say one of the cycles, you can ask, what's that going to give you? So um, let's find something interesting then. Yes. Um, and let's try to understand that. So in, in trying to do so, um, we, we're going to touch on the techniques used in the proof. And, and of course, here's where the lots of components of fundamental composition comes in. So these ideas, back to the 89, I think, when it was published. Um, uh, quite influential and a very seminal set of ideas that we answer here. So, so that's the prototype of Lawson's original result. And I'm sorry, I'm not switching the order of this, uh, the historical order of events here. So he showed that, uh, that, comes, um, that if you look at cycles, so there's not a real cycle, no, no, not a cyclonic cycle, it has the plane space of cycles, no equivalently, it splits naturally. Canonically, uh, as a product of k0, k02, kz2q, where q is the co-dimension of space of cycle. So, uh, uh, in fact, this, so it means basically that the homotopy groups of the space only occur on the cycle space that even dimension of the point z. So, so that, I will explain a little bit later how that um, homotopy equivalence um, arises. So, um, let's see, let's try not to go so fast, I don't want to run out of transparencies. So, uh, now I'm going to try to do the same thing as Blaine did. And, um, uh, and so this is not 
sort of like to work. Um, of course, it's not much to this, this group, so the migrated group. And so it's, it's and the topic of that real sight of them can be uh, written in terms of those groups. Of course, that in this way it's, it's dry, but basically it's saying that if you look at this jade, jade from a top group of the real cycles, then it's just the sort of a sum of Z's and Z2s. Right? So how, uh, what kind of sum this is, so I'm going to make a graph for display uh, of the homotopic groups that appear here. And so, and so this is, if you look at uh, this entire diagonal, so this is the total degree of the uh, migrated group. So then, I think, I'm sorry. So, okay, I'm defining the migrated group, I am K. Right? So is it is zero or zero, Z2. So I'm going to sum and then, and then I will show that there's a monotonic equivalence that splits this case of real cycles in front of island bird mapping spaces. So now, um, now if you look at n plus k if it's a fixed j, then I have several of those, meaning that the j from a top group for n plus k is a j. It's just a sum of seasons in two, so sometimes it's zero. And now what sum is it that's not displayed in this, to display the by group? So for example, if you want to see what's the form of a copy group, it's going to be precise. Like, so this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So C2 plus C2. That's the form of a group. All right? OK, so that's it. But now, now, again, as I said, I hope that at the end I'll explain, I'll make this look more natural than what is here. It's a little cost computation that goes on here. But in some sense, we are splitting some notes. So um, we can also uh, do this, which has some applications to the right topology. Um, we can define the average cycles inside the, the space of those cycles. Now V is a real V is a real vector space, and you look at the cycle that are fixed, the real cycle, but there are somehow sort of a lot of there must be called C plus J times C, and it's contained in the fixed point set. So this, this is just a subgroup of the group of all cycles that are fixed. I, I wrote in this talk that the cycles are really the real cycles of so the C upper Q of R. And um, mm -hmm. if you do that, then you can take a quotient. So it's a measure of the cycles that are fixed, but they are not sort of no one sum. And we um, <coughs> call these the space of reduced real cycles of coordination Q. So this is basically the free Z2 vector space on the, um, so the real sub varieties of uh, PRD. It's a, it's a topological space, but it's a Z2 vector space. Right, so, um, and then, so this, we can make the same definition for, for the quaternionic, the quaternionic vector space, you can find the reduced quaternionic vector, uh, reduced quaternionic cycle space. So the same, the same definition is divided, um, you divide the group of all fixed cycles, but those are sort of average cycles. So the first, um, the reduced real cycles have this description that was given by another student of Blaine, P.K. Lamb. That's right, yes. And, um, and he showed that, that these space of Okay, there's a word of mistake in the notation. This Z should have a little tilde above it because this is the reduced real cycle. So, not the real cycle, the real cycle that I've shown before. That's a very complicated grid type of thing. But if you reduce, if you divide that by the average cycle, then you only go between this part of the island back my plane space, the part of KZ2s. And so, and so this is, this is rather not when you start to say stupid with the classes, for example, in contrast to, um, to short classes. So you can see that um, the first computation by Blaine, you have this splitting for sort of Allenberg, my plane space K, Z, 2, J, or every J, and that, that's related to um, short classes, or this is related to stupid with the classes. I'll explain that a little bit 
And so basically, this really end the description of the homotopic type of the real cycles. So now, what about the quaternionic cycles? So that's what I'm going to try to explain. Um, the quaternionic cycle has only one little difficulty, which is that if you play around in quaternion, the quaternionic vector space, a thing of that nature, the behavior between the even and the odd co-dimension is behave differently. Quite differently, as a matter of fact. Uh, so we have to play around a little bit to account for the difference in our calculations. But the description of the homotopic type is much simpler. So we split the entire number of my type space. It's much, much nicer to describe and use the description. Okay, so um, if you have quaternionic type of spaces, this is how the splitting goes. So, Basically, in every, in every dimension of 0, 1, 4, you have a C. And if you have a different <coughs> co-dimension in 2, 1, 4, you have a copy of Z2 for the homotopy groups. So that's the top one. And here, you, you can change this a little bit. So it's 1, 1, 4 that you have that um, Z2 up here. So that's, that shows a little bit of difference between the even and the uh, odd co-dimension cycles. So those are the quaternionic cycles, the fixed point set kind of the, the involution of cycles. Okay. So what's this all about? Okay, so by now I'm not expecting to see And so I, I can look at people like some famous uh, physicists that, and, 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 and put on this thing in my jokes. So uh, this is not very illuminating at this point. But, uh, uh, so let's drop these split in the Weilenberg mapping spaces and let me try to explain where they come from. So let's drop this. <laughs> 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 uh, so the next goal is the following. We're going to stabilize the space. We're going to put one CN inside the other, one HN inside the other. And, um, and once you do that, what happens is that this gives you more structure to your space. It's just like, for example, if you take Grassmannians, you can take and drag some of vector spaces and send a Grassmann in CM to Grassmannian in CM, but you can take the direct sum that goes to CM plus M, so you shift things up a little. But then if you throw in and M order into infinity, everything goes back to the U. It's not fast. Right? So once you stabilize, you have this additional operation of with the sum of the U that you don't have the level of grass money because they're always escaping from those spaces like the higher dimensional thing. But so we're going to try to do exactly the same stabilization process with cycles instead of grass money. So now, uh, for, for those who would like to represent K theory with Fredholm operators, it would be interesting to know what would replace cycles in this context. If you have Fredholm operators modeling the U, what would the model in cycle space in the same context? Like So, um, <coughs> so once you do that, the same way as U, the U, the U becomes sort of the zero space of a spectrum, the zero space of something that classifies topological K theory, so it's very structured for homology theory, then, then the same thing as cycle space can generate, generate some spectrum, generate something that could classify, uh, so, um, generalized for homology theories. And they are related to K theory, KR and KH theory. KR is a PSK theory for, for, for the real spaces, not the basically C2 spaces, spaces with an action of the group C2. So now here comes um, the sort of basic tool that are used in the constructions. And uh, so the main tools used in the tools, I'm going to explain here very briefly, so the Blaine's ideas show up very clearly here. And, and I'll explain the stabilization process. So the first, the first thing we do is to generalize what the width with the direct sum of vector spaces is. So what replaces is that? So, and that's how the, the, the root joint of, of the base cycles. So if you have two compact vector spaces, so I'm putting everything in that language, then if you take cycles of coordination T and the projective space, projective first cycle of coordination Q, there's a 
way of producing this shine type polymation people are skewed on this bigger projective space, so it's not an external pairing for the moment. And Think about brass magnets, right? So uh, this is precisely if you think of if you think of linear subspace as a reducible cycle of degree one, right? So if you have brass of coordination Q in C N and coordination P in C N, when you take the correct sum of the linear subspace, you get something in the dimension P plus Q in C N plus N. Right? But this is just I think about weakness on the bundle. But this is precisely the same, um, this is um, actually a continuous uh, bilinear pairing. I believe, I am not wrong, but it was looking for some references, but it was first in the Tiburon basis paper, the laser where they showed that this is continuous. Is that right or you showed me? So let's let's try to see how how the join goes. So you pick P of C M and then P of C M, and you can embed them as the joint linear subspace. Think about a top and the bottom as the joint linear subspaces of a projective space, and then you have a cycle in, <coughs> in one projective space here. So you have another cycle up there. So you embed them disjointly uh, uh, in these two disjoint linear subspaces, and now what you do you pick you take a point in one irreducible so right down to the tau, and then you pick a point in sigma, and have a projective line running this too. And then you do that for all points. Do that for all points, and take the union of all those lines. So you get this, the join of this sigma and tau becomes the join of sub and complex projective space. And, um, and what it does is that it adds the combination it multiplies the degree. So if you, if you think about the break cycle as, as, as a gradient group, right, graded by the degree of the cycle, this is almost like giving, almost like giving a, a ring structure where it becomes a graded ring, except that the multiplication of the ring is some sort of an external operation. Like you know, it's, when, I, when I multiply cycle, meaning when I take their joins, I, I sort of jump up to a high dimension of space. So this is a graphic description of the join of cycles. And so in particular, so let me go back a little. So suppose the cycle sigma, sigma in this case, in the entire top ceiling, right? The entire projective space. So you can always fix one coordinate in the pairing, right? And take a suspension to the entire ceiling. And that's called the, uh, <coughs> the suspension to W. I'm sorry, particular the thickness is older than my fault. So uh, instead of having P and W, I had C and C M. So think about W as the ceiling. And so I'm just suspending cycles from the bottom to the ceiling. So I'm going back suspension. So lots of um, sort of main um, first insight, deep insight on this, was that this is a homotopic equivalent. So now, nowadays, this can be translated in several different ways. You can think about it. it's the same thing as saying that two back to the total space of O1, uh, the flat two back of cycles is a homotopic equivalence. It that way as well. But, but, but basically, he said that, remember that now I had W. Oops, I so W here is just replaced by C, and it is just making it thin, just sustaining to a point. So this suspension to a point is um, so taking a cone over a variety. It becomes a homotopic equivalence between such spaces. So in particular, if you want to, you can go backwards now, right? So if you want to start cycles of coordination Q in P of C N, it's the same thing. You can suspend cycles of coordination Q in P of C N minus one, and that's a homotopic equivalence. And you keep this suspending as far as you can until you reach cycles of coordination Q in the projected space of dimension Q, so you hit zero cycles. So basically, this 
start an estimation of two harmonies, the iteration of this homotopy equivalence then gives you zero cycles on projected space of dimension Q. And so now zero cycles, then we use some canonical yoga with semantic product and so on, and that thing goes back to spin bond. And <coughs> you show that you can split that in the product of Eilenberg Mathematics. There's a very interesting time sign here. But this is, this is a product of Eilenberg Mathematics. And for the more technically oriented people, this is the splitting of the low cube of P. Um, thank you. What is that? It could be anything bigger than Q plus 1. Right? So take a very big projective space with a cycle of dimension Q. And then you can de decrease the N. You go back. I'm sorry. So, so if this is CN, right? So it's C plus CN. Or CN plus 1, C plus CN. This is going to be CN. And then keep going back until you can come along there. Decrease the, the dimension of cycle. So, and and that, that, that's a canonical, so, so Lawson's theorem shows that this is a canonical homotopy equivalence, and then when you reach zero cycle, you split the space of zero cycles uh, as you split the um, the mode tube. So the same thing. Okay, so now, <coughs> equivalent suspension theorem, you want to do precisely the same now for space with an with, with evolution, so structure map, or also very variety. Okay, so the first result is lens again. In the real case, if this is a real vector space, then this suspension is a Z2 homotopic equivalence. So, meaning that it induces the homotopic equivalence in all fixed point set data for all subgroups of the group. The group here, fortunately, is Z2. So that amounts to say that combination of Watson's theorem and the statement that on real cycles, this is a homotopic equivalence, some vibration arguments show that also this suspension on the reduced real cycle of the So then, later on, um, uh, the, same, this, the same statement now becomes a quaternionic version of it. So it's a uh, LRM is lost and even lost and even higher. So um, the same statement holds. So, oh, you see what you see here? You know it's wrong, right? It should be an H. It should be a, a quaternionic vector space because we're now suspending to the to H, the quaternions. But cutting a base making a space. Yes. So so basically the quaternionic suspension is also a Z2 homotopic equivalent. That's what we're saying. So but but now we need to want to suspend cycles to to H to the P of the quaternions, the Brasserie curve, then we so the dimension increases by two. So meaning that you cannot always reduce to zero cycles. And that's a big problem. So so basically, this in the real case everything is fine because in the real case you can always reduce to zero cycles again. And then we, we using the dissuspension argument, we reduce the cycle of coordination Q to zero cycles, the fixed point set. And now the homotopic groups of the later, I mean, of the latter, are uh, the results in two homo homology groups of this space. So there's something called the one homology, and you can use to compute the homotopic groups of that. And this is basically how we find that split that we described before. So remember, we just need to find the homotopic group of those spaces which at the end amounts to compute the non homology of that. Of course, that's the funny canonical splitting as we have, like the non motivic splitting. We have to do some more yoga, but that's not even a problem. So, but that's how you find uh, the homotopic type of the real cycles. Now, if you look at the quaternionic case, then there are two, 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 two possibilities. One is the arc dimension. In that case, we can disuspend the zero cycles and try to use the same yoga and everything works just fine. And then, even though you mentioned, ah, that's, that's not possible. So we can disuspend to one cycle. But then, when you reduce, when you disuspend something to cycle of dimension one, what's the argument now? Well, that took, that was a little while to figure this out. But, but basically, you can embed this, um, this possible, you take the second variable as embedding, 
and that means that that borrows a very variety of the real sub-variety of the usual projected sub projected real projected space. And now here we make a complex suspension of the Bernoulli's embedding that is still a homotopic equivalence at the band homotopic table. And now here we we make some yoga to decrease the backbone in our direction. And we get the series of um, homotopy equivalences, and at the end we reduce the zero cycle on some different space. And um, and then we can use the same speaking arguments as before. But but it's it's some work to do that. It's a definitely a not trivial exercise that drove me, but not really what we do that. So, okay, so now let's explain the stabilization, because once you understand how, what, what's better when we stabilize, then you can understand those splitting points to actually very quickly. So, so, so the stabilization that they do here, although I'm just saying, maybe to limit from, from that to the of that, but what I'm just saying is that here, here think about this as projective problem of the picture. So we have Z cubed of P of Cn plus Cn of Z cubed Zn. Think about the graph moment of n planes in Cn plus Cn. And so you can definitely include that into, into combination n plus 1 of P of Cn plus Cn plus 1. This is just maybe inclusion as a subspace and some coordinate subspace. And then, and then of course, that here the, the image of this inside this. So you have you have this, this CN plus CN, and I cube you. I'm going to join to something like this. So I have a subspace here. I include, and then I look at this point, and I take a join like this. So this is the huge stabilization of U in which we include the subspace. And then you add the point trivial subspace to that, something like that. So it, it, that's a nice stabilization that those who have played Rasmus and you know what that is. And that's an and that is that's a Z2 equivalent map. So you can look at the fixed point set of those things as well, and they stabilize and just take the co limit of the same thing, and then look that below that by Z sub R. And now in the Quaternion case, we make a lot of a modification where we keep track of the coordination. So you define that, and if there are two types of fixed points set, remember that the Quaternion suspension is always an isomorphic of the equivalence, so there are only even and odd homotopic types that matter, the equivalent homotopic types that matter here. And now I'm going to accelerate, and I will start hitting this faster. So I don't understand that, forgive me, uh, I'm not going to explain much. But um, basically this is what, what creates, creates a spectra, meaning that when you have a well-structured external operation of that sort, then there is this, this uh, black box, the gold flag, that coordinates all, all those operations in a very nice way, and, and it spits out this nice structure that uh, will be created in many spaces. And, and basically you can think about those spaces as, as, a, as, a, as an abelian topological group plus this external multiplication that's very, very structured. In particular, like this is the multiplication gives an H, an additional H space structure on, on both the ZC and Z of P infinity, even an odd situation as well. So um, whatever this is, then it also preserves degree. Remember that if you have cycles of degree one and you join them, it still has degree one. So the cycles of degree one are, are, are kind of a multiplicative subset of that infinite range space. And so, um, <coughs> in particular, this one has also this big two equivalent include space structure enhancing the join operation. So here you forget addition of cycles. You just take external joins, which in some, in some all the all the Italian algebraic geometric uh, algebraic geometry school that, that represents the join of uh, sort of the intersectional cycle in some sense. And indeed Brain and Bahimis show that um, 
there's a giant of cycles we have to think about them as products of elevated metal space that classifies the product as a form of that makes any sense to you. But but then with this with this smooth cutting structure now, I'm gonna do the following notation. Even if the grid of being group, you can know KA as this product of Eilenberg microline space, where the K component in the product is K A K common K. So the K element in the K um, piece of the graded group is that Eilenberg microline space. And so if you do that, so let's say they are financial generator, the A case. And so the complex case then, the blade group, can be said that Z, the, the complex cycles, are isomorphic to that product of Eilenberg microwave space, where ZT you can see as a graded group, where T has only components of the even degree. Okay, so, so that's the size of Blaine's theorem. Now in a shorter notation. But what's nice is that this ring structure of a space induces the ring structure of the homotopic groups of this space as a graded, as a graded ring. And in this the ring space structure that comes with the joint of cycles makes the homotopic groups of those spaces a ring isomorphic to the T. So that's a very concise way of understanding all the gradings and how the multiplication goes. Now here's the nice thing about the real cycles. Look at this, look at this ring now, Z of X and Y, so remember ring not is ideal, where the variable X has degree 4 and Y has degree 1. So that becomes a graded ring as well. Like by homogeneous I do. And and so and as a graded as a graded ring, so the, the real side of the split as a part of the matrix space according to the grading here. So remember if I and K is introduced before, so that you don't this is another way of writing the I and K. So N is the first warning, K is the second one. And this is a picture that I had before. But now each, each entry in this binary group uh, comes from that gradient, from that gradient. So what's nice about it, let me go back in a second, is that the, the external pairing, the join of cycle that I described before, gives the homotopic groups of the real cycles the structure of the ring. And the, the structure of the ring is precisely the same as that ring. So this is a pretty neat, pretty neat decomposition. <coughs> so, so now quaternionic cycles, it's a more complicated way to describe because first of all, the, the world of even coordination becomes a ring. Right? So, whereas the not coordination is just a module over that ring, a module in the sense of whatever, overall space theory kind of thing. But as a ring, the same description applies to the even coordination of the ionic cycles. <coughs> so if you keep track of the grading, you know exactly what the homotopic groups are and how they multiply. And, uh, and then there's this blah, blah, blah about the odd coordination that I don't want to spend much more time on this. But, <coughs> but we can put the, the homotopic groups of the two spaces together, and we get this very nice Z plus Z2 graded ring <coughs> structure on the quaternionic cycles, so cycles on you know, trivial bars and various varieties. So they did the fixed cycles under, under the um, bench. So now I'm going to make a very brief, a very brief um, description of what you call the homo, the equivalent homotopic type. So after this point, I, uh, I describe what's the homotopic type of the fixed cycle. So just one aspect of the equivalent. But I must try to put everything together and jump into the equivalent world. But this is the equivalent world for the group Z2. So I'm denoting the, the, the representations of the Z2 with that notation R and P, where is N minus P copies of the trivial representation plus P copies of the sign representation of Z2. So that's a notation, the one point compactification of that. Um, representation I denote by S and P. And in, in, in the equivalent world, you have to, the best way to think of a lot of the theories is that they should not be graded only by, by I learned that in Chicago, um, uh, they should not um, 
This should not be graded by, by the integers, but this should be graded by the representation grade of the group, the, the underlying group of every kind of category of working. So we, have, we should think about our own Z2 graded homology theories, but Z2 has a nice representation. So basically, we have by graded uh, homology theories, and where they are, they are graded by these representations of, of the groups. And just to make a notation more specific, we can note the result of homology graded by this. <laughs> this is the Mach-E factor Z for those who know that. So anytime you have coefficients of Mach-E factor, you can extend that to the homology to graded homology theory. And those theories are still represented by some equivalent under Maclean spaces so that they, then the, the cohomology, the end cohomology, the end key cohomology is represented by the multi class of maps into those spaces. So now, the first um, description of the cycles in the trivial voice of their variety from the equivalent point of view was made by the Santos, and it was, again, a very nice decomposition, which the generalization of the Watson did, that this is how an equivalent splitting, this is compatible with a stabilization process. So you can use a factor in the infinite product, but also these are the equivalent Allenberg Maclean spaces. Do not forget that. But again, it has a very more typical flavor in its description. And we can do the same thing for um, the quaternionic cycle. This was the work of myself and the Santos, Pedro. And, um, and it's very different. The quaternion cycles are not the product of Allenberg Maclean spaces anymore. You have to use these function spaces from the Brasserberry curve into, the, uh, into some Allenberg Maclean spaces, and it splits differently according to whether it is even for not two dimensional cycles. This is very, I, I think this was a very neat discovery when it made it was pretty amazing by that. For example, uh, what, what is this space representing? If you think of it as representing a cohomology theory, it represents these cohomology groups in the equivalent world, as a matter of fact. So I have to take the product of the Brasserberry curve. For those who are familiar with the K theory of, of, of the Brasserberry curve, uh, as computers by Quillen, that has certainly a kind of direct relation to that. And so now, I want to make some remarks that that decomposition can be made in a much broader sense if you replace the, uh, um, the function spaces, the continuous maps, by a certain notion of morphisms from the Rothenberg curve to um, Allenberg Maclean spaces. The three level will also may be very precise. And, and then, when you, whenever you see F over there, you can replace by more, by morphisms. And, and that will generate some sort of quaternionic morphic cohomology. And are there motivic analogs? Most likely. So now, I'm going to briefly just tell how this ties with K theory. Well, if you have the inclusion of Brasnoyans as a subset of all cycles of degree one, then we have two types of inclusions. The, this, think about this as the stabilization of Brasnoyans on CN under the complex conjugation. There are all Z2 equivalent maps. These are cycles in a trivial loss of very variety, and this is the grass minor, this is the giant. And here we have to play around a little bit with some different spaces. Because to stabilize, you need to, do, to take in account both even in optical dimensions. You cannot run from that. So this is real in the top, but very in the bottom. And now this space classifies reduced. KR theory in the category of deep space, what's KR theory? Um, it's the K theory of bundles over a space with zero action, where the action in the base space is covered by bundle action, which is which is an anti holomorphic evolution. So this, this, this Atmos KR theory is classified by that. And now this classifies quaternionic K theory, um, which is a similar I think Dupont and George started there. And they have two different names, some called quaternionic, they also call, I forget, symplactic, symplactic, K theory. 
But then, so they talked about these two theories, and, um, and the theorem, um, I think I got to loss on my uh, mind from myself, is that this inclusion plus by the total term plus actually this paper. I'm sorry, I'm mixing everything, I'm getting too confused by now. It's one of the things. So um, this, this classifies, so the inclusion of the grass plane in all cycles, that's actually classifies, um, it represents a total churn class map in the Dante homology. But it's, and since this is compatible with the op infinite loop space machine, this actually extends to a map of advanced cohomology theories, where this cohomology theory is a very, very non-trivial cohomology theory because it's this cohomology group of a space is already all the even redundant cohomology of X under the cup product. So that's the zero cohomology, so the multiple units in some sense of the ordinary redundant cohomology. And this extends to higher KR theory um, connected and, and, and so and And now DuPont has this question whether or not such, um, we could okay. He showed that there were characteristic classes for KR theory, taking values in the non homology, but they couldn't find the right theory to have characteristic, be a recipient of characteristic classes from quaternionic K, for quaternionic K theory. And then Pedro and myself show that the inclusion of this, this Z cross B is quaternionic into all quaternionic cycles, he builds the total chunk class map from KH theory to the last cohomology theory where the, J, the zero cohomology group is this one. And this is basically um, one or zero, whether it's even or odd. So epsilon J. And, and that's according to the splitting that is described before. That's precisely classified by the splitting of quaternionic cycles. And this is a very natural. The product in this theory is amazing. It's not a trivial product as function space. The product is, the, the additive structure of this group is very complicated. And so, with this I'd like to conclude my talk, but before, so I, I'd like to make some personal comments on this stage. But are there any questions? Yes. Do you have any questions? Okay, so so this is yeah, I mean I think I'm the only student of brain. Do you have any other questions? Uh, I think one of the only student of brain I am the student of brain talking things. I thought that uh, I'm not I'm not sure if I speak on behalf of them, but I hope I'm doing that. I'd like to make some personal comments, perhaps some reminiscence as well. I'd rather like extend this. And uh, so I came here a while ago. <laughs> And uh, from small town to zero. And so I came to summer group to wanting to work with Lawson, who was pretty much a legend in the, the French geometry school in Brazil. And I was, you know, I had this image of this stern, Hubert like uh, mathematician. I come to Sonny Brook and go there to be playing nervous and all that. And, and, and then I moved away. I keep thinking, this can't be mathematician. It can't be. And I think the department has to be coined. So <laughs> the real brain is somewhere else. He looks more like a California Hollywood dude. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I took me a while to get used to that. But I think that was indeed brain. So, and still, I think that was a very soon, of course, I realized, well, he a great mathematician, and he's on top of that work, the person who's the one of And that was pretty amazing for me. I mean, it's a realization. As, as time passed, you know, then I discovered more. Actually, Brain was an athlete and an incredible cook, an artist, and that's puzzled me. Uh -huh. I said, aha, there must be something. Uh, I, I remember when I was a child reading Oscar Wilde, and I thought, 